most recent remarkable story is called The Time That I Broke an Arm in the North of China While Snowboarding. But it's not this fast what reminds me of it. My memory of that event remains in the experience that took place right after coming back from the hospital. Close your eyes and imagine yourself in this situation. You are all hurt, wearing the heaviest clothes because it's minus 20 degrees outside. You're crying and laughing alone at a restaurant because you just realized that you never told your non dominant hand how to bring food to your own mouth. Trust me, I will never forget the first time I ate noodles with my left hand and a pair of chopsticks. We all have remarkable stories. We put together some elements in the way we were taught at school, such as characters, plays, how, and outcome. But if we pay special attention to the character's emotions, maybe we can identify a very powerful element. The experience. The experience is what produced the butterflies in our stomach. It's what gave us the chills, all in a matter of an instant. But the experience is not in the title of the stories that we tell. We have to dig deeper to identify what was that detail that made this event stick to our memory forever. Experiences can happen anytime, any day. They are born when those elements that we do not control are perfectly mixed to offer us what I call the perfect sunset moment. Imagine there is a mixing console that takes all these elements and levels them up specially for you. Amount of clouds, level 3. Sunlight, level 6. Outside temperature, level 8. Colors in the sky, level 10. And you, the character of the story, unexpectedly turn your head to the left just to find the masterpiece that this mixing console has prepared for you. There it is. You see it. You are in front of the perfect sunset. At this moment, you either stop, breathe, and shiver, or you continue your way home. If you didn't stop, don't worry. There is nothing wrong with not doing it. It's just that maybe those elements were not perfectly tuned at the right moment. It's in our unconscious to decide if we interact with these coincidences or let them go. It all depends on our motivation. After I finished my degree in industrial design, something was clear. I was going to design experiences for a specific public. Travelers. So travelers might experience several moments of high emotional bond, like anxiety when arriving at your destination, or sadness when leaving, euphoria when they are exploring, or maybe they are sad when they are um, in the case of illness. This is when I designed a bonding strategy for the staff in which the entire crew at a hotel were established as a traveler's friend who to trust to. So, uh, who to trust to. Then, if our international visitors were feeling safer, they would be more exposed to perfect sunset moments. Years later, already managing a hotel that operates under the concept of discovery like a local in Bogota, I applied this bonding strategy in countless times, seeing that our radio occupancy had increased by an average of 90%. Everything was on track. I was designing experiences for travelers. But it was years later uh, at a taxi, at a, in a taxi at a family trip to Cuba, where a new experience changed my life again. This time, he was a driver who was improvising songs about our conversation. This simple act of uh, amability uh, made us have an amazing and beautiful memory. This driver created a perfect sunset moment for me and my family. He connected us all in this place. In this moment, I decided to change the way I was approaching my passion. After these holidays, I passed on my resignation letter and continued explore, continue exploring other ways to try to promote positive experiences in a more organic way and leaving the scripts aside. So, not long after that, I found myself out there looking for understanding the deepest needs of the traveler, searching for good tourism practices to be inspired by, or, that's what I thought, I was going to discover in the story that I call the time that I cycled from France to Greece. Some people want to hear the stories of crossing 12 borders, uh, losing 15 kilograms of weight, 
sleeping under a different tree every night, getting lost in Croatia, or trespassing a stable to not die frozen in the Swiss Alps. Yes, those events happen. But for me, the most remarkable story came later. After such an intense physical and mental activity of cycling for 54 days, I decided to take one last back. It was in the waters of the Mediterranean when suddenly all the thoughts inside my head disappeared. My mind was silent for the first time in my life. Just the world around me. Not remembering the past, but thinking about the future. I had the chance to experience the now, and it changed my life. In there, I understood the importance of being in the moment. I understood that at every second that passes, there is a new chance to create a new positive and free experience. None of them equals to the other. Every instant is unique, because just like when you're cycling, you go in one direction, forward. is my current target audience. Little human beings who live in the moment, whose experiences should be in all times positive in order to be an open and useful learner. I'm a kindergarten teacher, and my job is to design the route of emotions of these little ones, which varies minute by minute. Whether they are excited or tired, I must be aware that these emotions are being provoked for a, pur for a purpose, that each of them will have an impact in their learning process. I spend my days designing learning opportunities based on the children's interests in a motivational, experiential, and supportive environment. But the benefits that I have found, thanks to my students, the international travelers, in my own search of the perfect moment, are my positive experiences led to learning. Positive experiences can connect us all. They can change anyone's life. They are for free. And experiences can be created by anyone. So you don't need to study a major in design, work for hotels, or break an arm in China to know how to create positive experiences for others. All you have to do is to mix the outside conditions, add some empathy, and some simple action. So first, read the environment around you with all your senses. Then. Stop for a second, look at the other and recognize yourself in their eyes. Think of what the other must feel. And then, do. Do what you think can provoke a positive emotion in others. So if you need some ideas, here my students prepare some for you on how to create, to take action. So, how to provoke a positive emotion? For example, you can say lots of nice things. You can smile to others. You can pick someone's hat when it fell on the floor. You can carry someone's groceries. Help your friends. Or open the door for your mom when she's carrying a bag. Or simply be like, be, be kind. And she reaches to her teacher with a scarf when it's cold and his arm is broken. So we all are catalysts of experiences. I invite you to read the elements in the environment and uh, I invite you to play with those buttons to level the conditions necessary to awaken positive experiences in others. And every second that passes, there is a new chance to create a new experience. So the next time that someone is in need of help, you can surprise them with an act of kindness. If you are assertive, you can be that perfect sunset with the power of changing someone's life. You can be that story that someone is going to tell their grandchildren many years in the future. Thank you so much.